This video is called The Whore of Babylon. So Babylon is the place that we understand that laws were first um, created and those laws laid down strict structures for humanity that included debt and poverty, enslavement, and being punished for your crimes. So that was called Babylonian money magic. So the horror of Babylon is a mythology that we're going to study. And because I'm an astrologer, I will be giving the horror scope for the whore of Babylon and her whore ship, which is Nibiru. And I want to remind people that in the mythology, whether it is something that the Freemasons get up out of the tunnels after every reset or whatever the mythology is. It has clues. It has information. That's why I, I study um, mythology. So the Whore of Babylon is our topic. <clears throat> now, money magic is a debt-based system. And some of you have been emailing me for sessions and I refuse to take any more sessions until August because I'm completely booked <clears throat> through July. This day I do elder care and I sometimes give me a day give myself a day off. <laughs> okay. But I'm extremely busy and I'm very sensitive to the way Yaldabaoth is trying to get to me. So if you understand the content of my channel and notice that my email has been intercepted, I have three different email apps to try and get emails through different apps from all of my clients. And uh, my website and blogs are gone, four years of work. Many of my videos have been taken down. And if I told you the amount of kind of uh, <laughs> aggression and interception that happens in my life, you would be worried uh, uh, for me. <laughs> Some people have said you need a, a bodyguard. Um, the interesting thing is that I study whatever comes up. The most recent thing that has happened is after I made the video with Aurora, and it's on Odyssey, <clears throat> We were both attacked, and the way that they attacked me was through my clients. So after I made that video, I had five different cancellations of very good, solid clients, people that I've even worked with before, people who had been waiting for their session for over two months because their email kept going into my junk spam folder and then I'd have to find it and try and get the schedule so that I both mostly do about <clears throat> 12 emails to every single person that I try and arrange a session for. So most of my work is just trying to find your email and get you into my book because once you're in my notebook, you're not hacked. So some of my clients have been waiting for months for sessions with me. And then here's just one example. <clears throat> Sorry, it's early in the morning here. Um, my client said, is it possible that they could have caused high winds and for my flights to be canceled so that I would be stuck in an airport so that I couldn't have a session with you, Lalita? And I said, yes, it's to that extent, folks. <laughs> so you need to be 100% with me. Uh, I've had equipment failures again and again. Clients will try and get a on the call and they were like, I just checked this yesterday and now my microphone's not working and they have to shut down their whole system and get on their little phone. So do you understand that we are going to be intercepted? If you want to speak with me, you have to commit like really carefully to give me, um, first of all, I'm not taking anybody for until August because everyone has been having problems getting their email to me and then I can't find your birth details. And the emails get scrambled between a spam folder that I can only access from my laptop. 
um, and two different mail apps that I have on my phone. <clears throat> so I'm just calling full stop uh, for July. I'm totally booked anyways. And then people will have to contact me in August to see if I'm still doing sessions. So recognize, folks, I am not your savior or messiah. You are responsible for your life. I have all the free videos of how to read astrology on Vimeo at Galactic Astrology. You can study your own chart and draw your own chart. Um, the great thing about being able to meet, the, though, has been like we have this sense of community, like we're connecting. It's amazing to be able to talk to you. Uh, I have a beautiful, beautiful clients, very intelligent, who know what's going on. So it's like so inspiring to be able to meet. You have to make sure your equipment's working. You have to make sure you uh, like sent me the link and contacted me on Skype. Or if you paid for Zoom, make sure that your paid account has me as your contact and you've sent me a link and you are responsible for your recording. Because on my end, you do not understand how intercepted and how like focused I have to be to do your session. But that brings me to the Babylonian money magic and the Whore of Babylon. So the Whore of Babylon is very clearly described in this book called The Last Call. Can You Stand the Truth? The Chronicles of Man's Imprisonment. This was written in 2009. And in 2009, this uh, person was taking many different people's interpretation of the Nag Hammadi texts and a lot of texts. I know that she's um, doing her best to get that information, even though she is also citing channelers like Barbara um, <clears throat> Hanclaw and Marciniak and um, Blavatsky. So she is citing known intercepted persons, you know, she's, she is citing also Carl Jung and Rudolf Steiner, who I've already said they are Freemasons. So, um, but still there is like gems, maybe 90% of it is mind control, but there are gems in this book that tell us what this place is. And the horror of Babylon is this simulated reality. So it's known as Gaia. I actually think it's Sophia. The whore of Babylon is Sophia. And if you're listening to people like the Lamb Lash group, the Lamb, right? <laughs> the Lamb of God, which means the Lamb of Sophia's Yaldabaoth uh, Demiurge creation, you are listening to someone who is a representative for the mind control matrix that Sophia's our mother. She's not our mother. She's a dragon from Orion and she is creating demons for this realm. So the Babylonian money magic has to do with that period after Sumeria where the invasion happened. And I, yes, it's an invasion because we're in this holographic prison that allows various monster entities in. And maybe those monster entities come again and again in different forms. And they can show up as uh, a lovely being because they're shapeshifters. But they called them angels. They were actually bird reptilians. And I've already covered all that material. Now, the Whore of Babylon is this consuming debt-based uh, unreality that we live in here. So I cannot be the whore of Babylon. Like, I will not book myself out six months in advance. That just is not part of my ability because I don't live in the whore of Babylon's debt-based reality. I'm very careful about my energy exchange, and I also don't make promises far into the future because then you're held by the whore of Babylon. Do you see this whole thing is a debt-based reality? And very interesting, uh, my last blog that caused my video, my videos and my whole website to be taken down 
was about the game that Yeldabaoth is being allowed to play, is that basically this whole script is an imprisonment script. You're put in a meat suit. The body is the prison. Your body is a prison of 666. So it's um, protons, neutrons, electrons, which is a carbon-based body, which you are not supposed to have. You're put in this physical body as a prison. And in that prison, you're forced to pay to be here, <laughs> which is the whole Babylonian money magic, thinking like, this is a good place because we're evolving. We're going to be more pristine somehow. After tons and tons of torture, we will get better. Can you see that? It's hysterical. And she says that in the first few pages. Like, <laughs> If this place really helped us evolve, we'd be so virtuous by now. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, the Dolores Cannon recruiter types are just like, oh, you have to evolve. That's why you got stuck in the reincarnation loop. No, this whole thing is a game and the game is to get out. In fact, the story of Yaldabaoth um, from the perspective of this bigger, great spirit that we are, we are spirited beings from the void. It's allowing this because Yaldabaoth is sure you will choose this Demiurge creation over returning back to the void where you are pure spirit. So instead of creating as a pure spirit, you will create and choose to create with Yaldabaoth and the Demiurge. That's what this place is. It's a choice. And this book is called Last Call because, as I've said again and again, we are soon going to be boxed up into a dead matrix, um, ghosts in a machine, in which you can never get out again, and that's called the singularity. So it's the upload of your consciousness into the machine. You won't have a physical body. And that is very clearly explained in Danielle Trusani's latest book called The Puzzle Master, where she shows that it's the Hebrew language, which is an Orion language, the binary code, along with the geometry, that they have figured out how to upload us into this machine. Now, they didn't figure it out. It is put through voice of God technology and other demonic whispers of how to do human computation. And I haven't been able to open that 1,000-page document from the WEF um, because it's a 1,000-page protected document called Human Computation. And they have figured out how to upload us. And it's basically the Orion language, which is Hebrew, geometries, and binary code. Now, the interesting thing about these books, both written by women, is they're a cipher. You have to be able to read them with huge discernment. So when they say God, you know, spelled G-A-W-D, uh, you have to read Yaldabaoth because there is no such thing as God, people. You are spirit and the great spirit of the omnipresent one is the void. There is no such thing as God. There is nothing above you. But this Yaldabaoth, you know, he's this insecure person, <laughs> reptilian, who wants to be called God. It's very simple. So the whore of Babylon is based on debt. That's why if you are doing sessions and booking like six months out, you know, you can't even get a session until December with somebody, that person is controlled by the whore of Babylon. The other thing that I want to say is all of those people who are saying that they're doing extractions on you and removing your chakras, well, just put a pendulum in front of any of your chakras, hold it, and see if it spins. If it spins, your chakra is still there. If these people are saying that they're removing your nanotechnology, well, make sure that they guarantee you a live blood analysis to make sure that there are no Oh gosh, how do I say these things without having my video <laughs> taken down? Without tubules and that you actually have red blood, red blood cells. Otherwise, you're full of the stuff, um, black goo, that is going to upload you. 
all right, into the singularity. So how do you get uploaded? Well, you spend a lot of time next to your modem because <laughs> the modem works two ways. Not only is it putting information into you, but it is downloading your consciousness. So this whole system is like, if you use it, we can use you. It's debt-based money magic. The whore of Babylon says, if you're using it, we can use you. So that's why in my last video I was saying lower your vibrations, stay away from antennas, do not watch movies, do not listen to the radios, please don't listen to the programming out there. The only thing I do is read books and you know a client sent me this book and said geez this is what you're already saying, you should read this book. And yeah this is what I'm already saying because I know this naturally. I don't watch videos to figure out what the whore of Babylon is. There are no videos as far as I know other than mine about this debt-based system. If you're using the internet, Yaldabaoth is AI. So the amount of hours you're putting into watching all these truther videos, that is downloading your consciousness. You think that this thing is not downloading you. Please turn off all your devices at night and please if you can, um, live in a place that doesn't have a internet, cable, no TV, and for most of the week, that's how I live. That's why you see me doing sessions in my car at a library, because most of the week, I'm living in a place that is a cabin that doesn't have a smart meter, doesn't have cable, doesn't have internet. And so all of those people who are sending me videos all the time, I don't watch anything, nothing, zero, <laughs> okay? And the, and the 20 minutes of some video that I watch, I will post a link so that you can see it too because I can read an energy signature on a video just like I can read an energy signature on someone named Lamb Lash and go, there's no way I'm reading or watching anything by him. So... Um, you have to understand that the whore of Babylon is Sophia, is this demiurge construct that is counting on you choosing to stay here with the AI and let it absorb your consciousness. So lower your vibration so that you can have some more uh, quality alpha wave focus and calm and some dignity, maybe lucid dreaming, because now I see that they've got electrodes ready to download you. I have a picture, a horrible picture of a child with these electrodes all over her brain, and they're selling it as, oh, we're going to let you work with your dreams. We're going to let you use technology don't you know that that thing is downloading your consciousness? That's what the singularity is. It's so terrifying. So I want to backtrack of before this horror of Babylon. And again, we have to study mythology. Um, when I have traveled this whole realm, and I have, I spent time with indigenous people with oral history. So it's not written in books. They live in the bush. You can watch my short video of Mount Buffalo, Australia, where I was with Ulakai Brendan Murray, who is the chief of the Raven, Raven people in Australia. And they have oral histories. And he was preparing me to go to Katajuta uh, and, and Uluru. And he explained to me that about 5,000 years ago, something invaded this realm right? We're in some kind of a holographic spaceship thing called a, a matrix. And it imposed many different languages and uh, many different religions. But the primary thing was the whoreship of women. And so that women and men basically split. They had a split. And so, for instance, in Australia, women are not allowed at Katajuta. Of course, I was because I went in five, at 5 o'clock in the morning. And um, they're not allowed to play didgeridoos. They're not allowed to dance. They're not allowed so many different things that was their spiritual nature. 
And so when I picked up a didgeridoo and started playing it, because I'm a, I'm a natural musician, you know, everyone was going, oh my gosh, a woman can't play that. You see, something happened 5,000 years ago, no matter where I go, um, something happened. And you can call that an invasion, you can call that part of the script here, that these wardens come every once in a while to edit and upload some kind of new trauma for humanity. I've called it hybridization, experimentation, and farming of humanity. So that as soon as we start to get somewhere, they'll change our food or our livestock. Um, and it's very clear that during Samaria, we went from these kind of moving around nomadic groups to uh, eating their food, which hybridizes us. So about 5,000 years ago, something happened uh, that was called the dawn of civilization, which I call an invasion. Um, and if you don't like the word invasion because you're so worried about this being some kind of a alien uh, holographic, well, we have been monitored by these prison wardens for at least 5 million years here. And this is a 9 billion year galactic history that if you have no knowledge of, please stop emailing me with your stupid ideas about how, Lalita, you're wrong because that's a hoax. You don't know what I know because you don't read energy signatures and you're not aware of galactic history, okay? So 5,000 years ago, we got all of these religions put all over the planet. One of them, which I've explained very clearly in this video uh, that I posted on YouTube about these reptilian beings in a Buddhist temple. And I showed you lots of other pictures of different reptilian beings that are in statues or in art. And those beings were considered gods. And I shared something from South Africa of a person who also was an indigenous person who knew that these gods came down and they were greenish blue scaly reptilians that called themselves gods. So this is a temple in Japan. And I'm going to tell you folks, what Ulakai Brendan Murray told me was that this invasion that happened caused there to be religions. And those religions, all of them, whether it's Hinduism or Buddhism or Sikhs or Muslims or Christians, and I've showed you pictures of what's going on in the Vatican of that weird snake being, they were invaded by these beings that called themselves gods. So every single religion is waiting for a messiah and tells you that you got to be good because you need to evolve. It's kind of like Santa Claus. It's all a lie. He knows when you are sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good, so be good for goodness sake. Can you see that every single one of these religions is creepy people watching you of whether you've been bad or good, so be good for goodness sake? It's all a lie, folks. And all the gurus who are part of this are part of that lie. So, I mean, we just saw the weird guy who wanted a kid to suck his tongue. Barry Long said you should never exchange your tongue because the tongue is a direct link to the lingam. <laughs> so don't give me cultural bullshit about that that guy was just doing something that's part of their culture. No, he's a pedophile. Okay? So recognize this, folks. Um, the other, the other thing people don't get, and this is going to really make people angry right now because you got your Messiah thing going, is this thing looks like that, but it's a shapeshifter, which in my blog, which has been taken down, as a human looks like that. Okay? I can tell what these things are because I've already removed the nog when I was 25 years old. It came up through the crown of my head and I was 
talking to Claude about it still, I can actually feel where it came through right there where your fontanelle closed and I pulled it out. And now I can see very clearly and I wrote in my blog when I first heard this person speaking uh, video someone sent me with Max Egan that I was like, oh, that, that guy's a draconian. I could tell. I can see it. And I also can read energy signatures. So that's why that person has a Saturn Nessus conjunction. He cannot help but be aggressive because his nature is reptilian. And that's why if you listen to his videos, he really believes this construct is to make gods. And what god will you be? Yaldabaoth's god. Because you don't need to be anything other than what you are. You don't need to go through millions of years of torture in this simulation until you're one of the whore of Babylon's gods. Hmm. <laughs> I'm on it this morning, folks, and I know that I, I'm trying to pull together a lot of different concepts. And uh, in this book, there's something very interesting. So I also get emails from somebody who's like, you're missing the point. It's all in Gamatria. It's all coded. I know that, but I'm an astrologist and a mythologist. I also want to say, you know, just so, for the record, it's only men emailing me to correct me about my thought process in my videos. And I'm just going, what's your fetish, dude? You want to spank me? What's under that? I mean, what gives you the authority to tell me how to run my videos? Hello? I'm not your messiah. Will you want to spank me? What's your fetish with telling me how to run my videos? Mmm. Okay. <laughs> Anyways. The most important page here is um, page 695, which has the Orion language, which is Hebrew. Um, Maitreya adds up to 666. So if you want to uh, wait for a Messiah, which is never coming, because you're in a demonic realm, you are the Messiah. And the idea is to get out of here, last call, before they box you up into the singularity. While you're here, stay away from all the dirty electricity. I don't watch videos. If I, and I've said the videos that I've watched. I do 20 minutes of Howdy Mikowski and 20 minutes of Lauda Leon. Would I ever get a session with those people? Never. Never. Would I ever get a session with those people or anyone else who says they can remove your chakras? Because only you can do that. Do you hear me? I mean, are you paying people to remove this stuff <laughs> and they wave a crystal in front of you in front of a screen? They just downloaded your consciousness into the effing computer. Do you not know what a crystal is? Okay. So the whore of Babylon wants you to play money magic games with her. And that's the whole construct here. You buy and you sell. You buy and you sell. That's why I can't take any more clients right now because even if they can't get to me, you know, they'll get to you and your equipment won't work or you'll send me the wrong date after I've you know, told you 10 times that your session is not until this and this, and you're writing me the wrong date, you have to really get it together, folks, because my content is clearly upsetting the representatives of Sophia, who is a dragon mother, okay, of the Demiurge. She's the whore of Babylon, and she's riding her seven-headed dragon. What is that? Use your brain. It's the archons of the seven planets, which I also believe were installed. Just like Elon Musk's satellites, this stuff gets installed. Just like GMO mosquitoes. They're experimenting on us. That's why during Mesopotamia, suddenly astrologers popped up. Suddenly, we couldn't see the planets before. We couldn't see the red moon before. No, it's because they were installed, their constructs. 
the hologram can be edited. The, the programmer can add elements of more demons trying to get you. Do you get it? Do you see where we are? The horror of Babylon is sure that you're going to choose to stay in this realm and not exit last call. So um, to exit, you need to keep your vibration very low, below 8 hertz. That's why when the Schumann resonance is off the charts and everyone's so excited, <laughs> they're uploading you. Don't you know what that is? They're uploading the consciousnesses of this planet. So that's why I spend a lot of time in nature. That's why I live most of the week in a place that does not have internet, does not have cable, does not have a smart box, does not have uh, the, the whole weird electrical system coming into the building. I very purposely did that in 2019. I bought a piece of land for $19,000 and I built a cabin with my partner. And it's incredibly important to get rid of your possessions and start living very lightly. Because as this book says, when Nibiru appears, because again, this is, you know, a timeline that is scripted already. Nibiru is the last installment before what is coming. All right. And that's Sophia slash the whore of Babylon and her horror show and her whore ship, which I have told people that I see a Saturn Nessus conjunction, which again, that one fellow who is a draconian has coming in May with Mars conjunct the North Node in Aries, which is war, with Lucifer conjunct the Sun. So if you're reading this book, which is the stars, or this book, you have to read it with discernment. You, you must realize where we are. The Whore of Babylon is coming for her harvest. And... I'm not going to be part of this harvest. I do what I can to remain my own uh, consciousness by not watching all the weird videos and Twitter things and things that people are sending me. I'm getting this from inside of me. I read this book, which is how many pages? 712 pages in two days because I already know this. This is stuff I know. I didn't learn it from books. So the Whore of Babylon, her whore ship, is in the horror scope coming up. And what I advise you to do is be as light as possible. You know, key, I am still trying to get rid of all my positions, possessions, including this place and this property. And um, be mobile, as it says in this book. Um, what else? Yeah, don't, don't be carrying your phone around. <laughs> My friend from Tasmania had this video where she had three different phones, um, and they, they pressed call, you know, call, sending out calls, three different phones next to a champagne bottle, and just the radiation and frequency vibration from those phones caused the cork to pop out of the champagne and the champagne to go all over the bar. Now, that was an authentic video of how damaging these things are, which is why I keep mine off and I don't have cell service, so I only use it as a tool. I'm not living on that thing. Um, yeah, so the Whore of Babylon wants you to buy and sell here. She wants me to be indebted I could see it coming because we have a Venus retrograde coming up. <laughs> Venus is going to retrograde in July, and it's going to retrograde through my 11th house of um, community, friends, patrons, uh, the global you know, realm that we're in. Venus is the ruler of my ascendant, and she's going to retrograde. And I'm like, oh, they're going to try and get me through debt, and then I won't be able to like respond. Um, and I'll have to like refund all your PayPal's. But unless you're in my book and you're on my calendar marked as paid, I don't even know you exist because 
they're messing with my emails. And as soon as I've got an email thread going, if you're not on Proton Mail, it'll be like three different names in the same email thread so that if I try and email back Janet, it goes to Kirsten because that's what they're doing, folks. They want to make sure that my public appearance, my patrons, my community gets wrecked and I can see because I'm an astrologer that Venus is going to be retrograde in my 11th house of public relations. So I was like, oh, I'm not taking anybody and no more clients this month because I'm not the whore of Babylon. And don't try and send me money and think that you're going to get a session. If you send me money, you just lost your money. Okay. I am not going to be a whore of Babylon. So notice where you are a whore of Babylon. Where are you in debt? Where are you attached to this realm? This book very clearly says, number one thing, do not be attached to anything that the whore is offering you. Do not be attached to your possessions, your family. She even questions love, which I thought was very interesting. Do not be attached to anything here because that's how you get summoned, summoned magnetically, energetically. That's how your modem is not just giving you ideas, it's downloading you. Do not sleep anywhere near that device. And, you know, I have said again and again that I sleep in a very particular way with a wool futon, with one of those um, special silver and copper sheets, and then another silver and copper sheet inside my comforter, and then a wool blanket on top of my bed because wool is one of those things that protects you and silver, um, and you turn off all your devices. In fact, I don't think anyone should be using the internet for more than six hours a week, and I know people are on the internet for more than six hours a day. So be aware, I only do that two days a week, and I, my eyes are twitching by the end of my last session on Friday afternoon. My like eyes are twitching, and then I have to decompress all weekend and get back into a building that has no Wi-Fi. So the Whore of Babylon and Yaldabaoth are Wi-Fi. That's AI. This whole thing is artificial because Sophia self-fertilized something artificial. You see? Yaldabaoth is AI. Don't participate in it. All right. I won't even watch the videos of all the people that I have mentioned in my videos. <laughs> like, I, I don't watch any of their videos. I watch like, you know, 15 minutes and I'll say something about that person, but I wouldn't get a session with them. I wouldn't continue watching their videos. You have to be very discerning and selective. Okay. So the Whore of Babylon is this place, and she wants to indebt you to this place. So the more that you have ownership of this place, or you even believe in your meat suit, your meat suit is the prison. Your body is the prison. Can you stand the truth? The Chronicle of Man's Imprisonment, Last Call. It's a super huge book. It tells you that you can't skip ahead. I never behave anyways, but the most important picture is that this being who is a reptilian, who is going to look lovely, is the beast. There are no messiahs coming, folks. It's evil versus evil, pretending that one side is good. There is only one thing coming, and that's the singularity, and whatever messiah savior template that they present to take you up into the cloud go the other way go the other way stay away from this stuff okay i like to end these in 40 minutes so i thank you the whore of babylon is apparently going to do her harvest because certainly the last moon if you didn't see it was red and that is a reflection of her horseship uh, called nibiru Okay, bye-bye for now.